Hello everyone, I want to talk about very important topic again today that's art of active learning and how to learn productively, okay? So we'll start right into it. So first thing I want to talk about is spaced learning. Remember this is spaced learning, not necessarily spaced repetition, what people are using right now as Anki cards, okay? So here is the simple thing, okay? And I want to go down to the very basic, basic thing. So spaced learning is, let's say you're learning guitar, right? One thing is you learn guitar as a crash course for one month, okay? Versus you learn guitar, let's say you learn few lessons today and then in a week and then maybe again after a month and then maybe again in a week. Which one do you think would help you more in learning guitar? It's the spaced learning or spaced education, right? It's, it's pretty intuitive. We know the basics, right? Can you make or learn by doing crash course on how to make chapatis or how to make you know, good food? No, we all know practice would make a man perfect, right? So if we know that basic, why are we running after crash courses? Why are we learn, you know, running after the things which we want to learn just in three months or things which we just want to learn in six months, okay? So first of all, your focus should be to get the material thoroughly rather than chasing it time, rather than, you know, saying I want to finish everything in three months, okay? That's one thing. The other thing I want to say, it's, you know, crash courses would be just like overeating and you may not have enough time to absorb the things. And if you eat slowly, you'll have enough time to assimilate that knowledge and eventually apply that knowledge. When you read large chunk of information like in crash course, once at a, you know, all time together, you may feel confident that, okay, I covered a lot of information. Um, I learned this, you know, crash course in seven days and now my exam is in the next day. That may give you actually a false sense of confidence because you just covered a lot of information. But let's say if you ask that question to yourself or if someone asks you to apply out of that knowledge yeah, in after a month, you probably won't be able to remember those things, whatever you learned in that seven days, okay? So in reality, you may feel that you know things because you covered it very quickly, but you might not have mastered it. So the bottom line I wanna say here is that don't focus on just cramming everything in a short amount of time you have to give time to the process and you have to learn how to learn okay so even for this video you really have to you know try to understand what am i saying there is no shortcut okay you'll see many tips and tricks and you know things which you can do but the bottom line is more effort you put in more benefit you will have for yourself if you are running after just chasing shortcuts, it's just, you know, in the end, you'll have to pay for it. The second thing is more difficult the process is, more better the results are. Like, for example, if you are studying cardiac cycle, one person studies cardiac cycle and there is a one page and he studies it quickly and takes his exam and he's able to pass it. The other person studies the same cardiac cycle for entire one day and he knows what's the timing, what are the phases of cardiac cycle, the pressures of cardiac cycle and everything. What do you think? It's a simple answer, right? Who would have learned it better? Of course, the person who spent more time, who made more complex, easier to understand in his mind, right? So more effort you put in, more are the chances you would remember it in the long term. So try to put in more efforts and ask why every time you read something. So if you are reading something, hmm, this uh, isovolumetric contraction, what is iso, what is volumetric, what is contraction? Try to break down each word, try to break down each sentence. That's the way you will remember it for a long time. The next thing I want to say is test yourself, okay? So let's say I would have students asking that I read first aid for 15 times. I still cannot remember this information. I'm not able to link concepts together. It's not about how many times you read first aid. It's not about how many times you read any damn thing, okay? It's about how well you absorb that knowledge, how well you are able to absorb that knowledge in, let's say, even two to three passes of that and how you are able to apply it. 
And here I want to emphasize very important thing is active learning. What exactly is active learning? Let's say you are reading a paragraph of, of a book, right? Active learning is you have to stop and ask yourself and test yourself. Did you understand that? So you are reading a paragraph and then you have to look up. Okay, don't look at that paragraph. Look, look up and summarize that paragraph, what that paragraph was actually saying. Make USMLE style questions out of, that, out of that paragraph, which you may be tested in your exam. So you are putting yourself in the shoe of examiner that if you were an examiner, how would you make questions so that the students who are taking USMLE would be expected to answer, right? So you are, you are switching the gears. So now your concept of reading would be from understanding to examiner mindset, right? That's very important. So this is how you read a paragraph and you have to stop yourself, ask yourself that question. You might forget, right? So people get discouraged by, you know, this thing that, okay, I'm forgetting. So they keep on reading, keep on reading and they never look up. They keep on reading, they read the entire first aid like 50 times and then in the end they would still not remember because it was not active learning. Active learning is you read, stop, ask yourself, you summarize yourself, make questions by yourself. Okay, you have to do it in your head. So I'm just, I'm this the whole summary of this video would eventually be you have to invest in yourself. You have to invest in that concept right now. You have to, you know, understand that concept in and out. You don't have to, you should not leave any stone unturned. If you think, oh, let me just read it and this would be, you know, I'll figure it out later on. That's, that's not gonna come back again. So invest now, invest in yourself now. You know what, what's the most important thing to invest? It's not money, it's not gold. Most important thing to invest is in yourself now, okay? So if you are preparing for USMLE, the best thing to invest is in yourself understand it more and test yourself more, do more questions and try to teach it to your friend. Have a discussion amongst yourself and make a Zoom meeting group and then you can talk to each other, okay? And then fourth one I wanna talk about is your learning style doesn't matter. Some people remember visually, like I'm a visual learner, I need graphics and animations. Some people are good at reading just by, you know, books, so they can learn books, they can learn by reading books. Some maybe, you know, learning good by listening to the things. So it doesn't matter what, what your learning preference is, as long as you are able to make those mental models and associations. Like if the patient has hypertension, patient is young, female, some renal bruit, why is it fibromuscular dysplasia? Again, remember it's fibromuscular dysplasia. I have to remember, you know, what exactly those means. What's the first test I would order? Maybe renal duplex and why I would order that and not maybe something invasive. So there is answer to every statement and every word and every line. If you are, if you are doing that, you'll be one of the best physician in the world. Okay. You know, this is what good students do. And I always say this is what extremely good students would do that. Let's say they, they know that they know aortic dissection, right? But whenever they read that topic again, they would try to learn new things of that aortic dissection. You know, let's say for type B aortic dissection, we know that it's always medical management. So next time I read the topic, hey, there are some conditions, even in type B aortic dissection, if they dissect specific organs, you might still need surgical management or you might need endovascular coiling. So, you know, there's a reason and science and the science is going to keep on evolving every time. The medicine from 10 years from now would be entirely different than what it is now. So you have to keep up with the literature, try to learn new things over and over and over and again. It will take hours and hours to master one concept and, and trust me, eventually you'll know that pattern recognition and even in real life, you'll be able to come with, you know, some very good creative solutions which, which no one could be able to think of that, right? And fifth one is everyone would make mistakes. If you're not making mistakes, you probably are not learning, okay? So make mistakes. If you make that mistake, dig a little more deeper into that topic and then work hard in that area to an extent that next time if the topic will be tested, you shouldn't be making it wrong, right? So in summary, I would like to say that learn, self-test, periodically, okay? Then apply the knowledge, Q banks, and then you discuss it with someone again, 
and then you revisit the topic and learn again and master it over and add that new layers of knowledge uh, every now and then okay so you know that was my you know few minutes talk uh, on how to effectively learn the bottom line i would say just keep doing and there are no shortcuts you have to invest in yourself right now the more you do more benefit is for you and if you have any questions just you know write in the comments below i'll be happy to you know answer those and please uh, check my instagram page and if you like this video please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon and if you are interested in looking for usmle if you are preparing for step one or step two please check usmle strike website for more information about the courses thank you